Greetings, friends. Since we were children, we have seen history in textbooks as a very exact science. One that knows perfectly and precisely when and how the most momentous and important events occurred in the world. Gigantic wars and above all the origin of absolutely everything that exists. All ideas and currents of thought, ideologies and beliefs. But, do they really tell us the whole truth about our history? About fascinating civilizations like Egypt, Greece, or Rome, among many others. All of these have left us incredible advances and spectacular and irreproducible structures. The truth is that they do not allow us to know our past. They lie to us to be simply slaves of in this world. Very few people throughout history are those who have been able to question their reality and propose or achieve changes. It is time to analyze and question that story that was dictated to us as children. Check it with reality with the facts and processes that we observe in real life. With the powers who wants to separate us from a spirituality. Of a true past. Get away from real knowledge. Of ancient knowledge. So that we always ignore our origin and why we came to this world so that we do not anticipate them on their plan and since knowing about the past is essential to knowing the future. In this way we can analyze and understand how almost nothing has been what they tell us. The Middle Ages, wars, the origin of technical and technological developments, brainwashing us with incongruous movies and theories, they seek to convince us that everything is and was, just as the official story tells us. By the way, I recommend a very interesting book called, The Masonic Birth of Modern Science. Where it talks in part about how the true story was hidden and in many cases even made up. I will show you evidence of only a few inexplicable facts and historical inconsistencies, as there are so many. For example, the origin of metallurgy. Since the old evidence found does not match. The iron weapons found in strata of ancient Egypt when the smelting of copper was supposedly not yet discovered. Also its incredible technical advances. His alchemy. And his knowledge of constellations. On solar anulums. And fundamental cycles. Another example of this incredible metallurgy is the Damascus steel swords. Which was recently replicated after millennia of being a mystery. Only being possible to do it in the laboratory. Now the recipe is known. However these ancient swords are of incredible purity. Even more than those created today. Only melting copper requires 1084 degrees which is not achieved in an ordinary forges. Not to mention Damascus steel. It is certainly not explained how the ancients achieved perfection in so many aspects of life, things that many times have not been achieved in the same way to this day. The very discovery of metallurgy is somewhat shrouded in great mystery and historical anomalies, since the original methods involve alchemy and processes that were considered to be of magical origin. It is unknown how it was possible that humans could simply unite all that knowledge by chance. To such an extent that the intervention of certain extra-dimensional beings is theorized. Those mistaken in ancient times for gods and demons. Those we now call aliens or high-dimensional beings. All the Copper Age megaliths could not be built with the rudimentary tools they tell us they had. 
we are talking about Stone Age people armed only with soft copper chisels and stone hammers, and building the most incredible and impossible structures known. We must understand that ancient times were very different from what they tell us. Much has only been theorized. Or told through selfish interests. Ancient legends tell stories that only now are we being able to revalue and understand as undeniable realities. Another mystery is why there are so few monuments from the Middle Ages and so many from the Ancient Age. What happened and what devastated incredible cities made of massive rock? What really happened in the Ancient Dark Ages? in the Middle Ages, and in the so-called obscurantism. Why have they hidden it? Are we really in the year they tell us? Okay. We must understand that history has always been written by the powerful. Those who have resources, or who will benefit from a certain version of the story. The winners of wars, etc. Let's remember who is in world power right now. Exact. The Pope and the Queen, that is, the Vatican and royalty. The hidden history must be unraveled, as it is fundamental to understand how it is that these powers have taken over the world even of their time and I say this because even the counting of time was established by them. The calendar, the years, and the complete world chronology. All of this they did by power and control, adding 1000 invented years to our history. This is real and in a moment we will talk about it in detail. We just have to understand that in the history that we are allowed to know there is a multitude of alterations and reversals. As well as very dark things that do not allow us to know. We must understand that history has always been recorded a posteriori. That is to say, time after the events occurred, and often accommodating as best suits the interests of whoever tells it. In this way we can understand that the official version exists, and apart from many other isolated facts that only when understood as a whole, begin to shape the puzzle. The stories reached the few who knew how to write a long time apart, and apart distorted by the people who told them. They even arrived as legends or oral tales proclaimed from town to town. Thus, one of the ways to get closer to the truth more accurately is to analyze what is in the rock, as well as the strange artifacts that have been left behind by the civilizations that preceded us and that we now know, were not ignorant or savage people as textbooks lead us to believe, favoring our forced adaptation to a self-destructive world. Now we will go on to analyze certain historical evidence that supports some catastrophic events that would have led to the rewriting of history. As well as to hide certain information, and to invent many others in order that the great mass of people live enslaved and never know or wonder about the old. About magic, and modern processes that are nothing but the same alchemical processes, only more perfected and endowed with that so subtle technological ritualism. Today's chronology was created and completed in the works of the 16th and 17th century chronologists, Joseph Scaliger, and the Jesuit theologian, Dionysius Petavius. It is precisely his view of history that we study to this day. From that date they were counting and naming the events of the past chronologically, and a consensus was established among the powerful of the moment, which gave rise to the current historical regulations. However, in ancient times there was no chronological and temporal accounting that we currently have. Each civilization had its own conception of time, 
which although similar in solar cyclical terms, was not similar in terms of years, months, or weeks. Therefore, any attempt to establish a consensus or chronological parameter between documents and writings of different civilizations becomes mere conjecture. One of the points where historians are based is at the time of the founding of ancient Rome. However, in the Roman chronology, as well as in what they tell us that its historical monuments are, there are numerous contradictions. According to the generally accepted version, Rome was founded in the 8th century BC by the twin brothers Romulus and Remus, and all the history that goes with it. However, today it is already known that this story in its representative sculpture is of Renaissance manufacture. There is also yet another story, according to which Rome was founded by Aeneas and Ulysses, and was named Rome after the daughter of Aene. But if this were so, then the founding of Rome took place after the fall of Troy, where we are told that Aeneas and Ulysses participated. That is, not in the 8th century but in the 13th century BC. Those are 500 years out of deface. This is no small thing, since it would not only give truth to the myth of Troy, but also to the legendary semi-divine heroes such as Achilles. If not, it would hide what happened in the dark time of which almost nothing is said. It is a well-documented fact that sometime around 1200 BC, the ancient world of the Greek East and Mediterranean suffered a series of great unknown catastrophes. These calamities included the destruction throughout the world of ancient cities and citadels made of rock. Complete disappearances of civilizations such as the Etruscans, the Nabataeans, the Thracian peoples, the Mayans and Olmecs, the Minoan and Mycenaean civilization, among many others. They all disappeared without a trace and during more or less the same period. All of them left incredible monuments that generate an infinity of mysteries present to this day. We do not know for sure what caused the catastrophes. However, we can identify the defenses used in ancient times to counteract these cataclysms. Underground giant cities I like Dering Kuayu. Dug directly into the rock in a clever way and without decorations. as if it were a completely safe bunker against something that happened on the surface. Not only is Daring Kuayu, many other incredible structures were sculpted at that time and with impressive skill. Giant cities carved entirely out of mountains. This is the case of the so-called Kailasa Temple where hundreds of thousands of tons of rock were impressively removed. Since this temple was carved into the mountain, not adding stone, everything is a single piece of rock. The so-called megaliths, or megalithic structures. Many of these contain passages too narrow to accommodate a human, and makes us wonder how they were made if we are not even able to enter there. As well as these there are many others equally or more impressive and of which we will talk. We must understand and realize that these things will never be discussed in a history class. They prefer to indoctrinate people before so that when they grow up they no longer question and do not realize that there is a bitter struggle to hide our past. Not satisfied with this, there are also other mysterious objects, which defy the entire official modern chronology as well as the famous current logic. Such incredibly ancient artifacts are called upats. Or objects out of time. 
They are a series of objects found in different very old strata, which involve technology and alchemical processes very advanced for their time. Some cannot even imagine its realization today. Below I will show you just some of these objects, which in my opinion are the most impressive. We begin. There is evidence around the world that confirms that nothing they teach us is like that. Day by day traces of very advanced techniques and lost knowledge continue to appear. Anomalies out of his time. One of them is this that appear to be old transportation systems. Grooves in the rock called ancient wagon routes. It is not known how and for what they were made, or if it was really to transport something, since they look similar to a modern train rail. Another interesting mystery is the rocks called Trovents. Or what they tell us are rocks. However they grow with water, and have concentric layers as if they were very old giant seeds. Another very intriguing object are the emerald tablets. Made of an almost unknown and transmuted material, containing knowledge of very powerful alchemical magic. They are part of a larger table, which appears in very old engravings. The secrets of this object are said to include the transmutation of gold. The change of body and consciousness, as well as knowledge of very advanced and very secret fundamental philosophy. It is said that whoever reads them awakens his mind and consciousness to many degrees. Within the Upats properly speaking, there are many very rare ones. However, one of the most impressive is the so-called Black Pyramid of the Son of the Creator. It was discovered on a cave in Ecuador, it has an eye, and several steps that are made of another material, and is transmuted. And the most amazing of it, is that for some reason, the eye and the steps glows with ultraviolet light. It is not known how old it is, or where it comes from, although it is believed to have came from Egypt, below it has several characters in Proto-Sumerian, and the unambiguous reference to the constellation of Orion. Certainly an incredible mystery. And this is just one of many other incredible facts of which we will be talking about. It's objects out of their time that denote historical anomalies and inconsistencies that make us think that there were indeed many incredible things that they hide from us. Why would someone flee from Egypt to Ecuador taking that valuable treasure with them? The American continent was not supposed to be discovered yet. Much less could we think of a contact between civilizations so far apart. What would motivate someone to flee so far from the land of him? A war wouldn't make it go that far. A cataclysm perhaps? One they already knew would happen. Such massive cataclysms have occurred in cycles for thousands of years. This is well known to the world's elite, but again, it is not in their best interest to let such information be known. It just analyzes the information. There are many more than has been said here. In this time of calamities, countless parchment and books were rewritten by the Vatican. This happens around the year 1600, gathering legends and writings at convenience, and hiding others and destroying others, in order to assemble the Bible as we know it, and shape current world history. That is why whenever a discovery arises that questions the official line is hidden and minimized. 
for example the Thracian Empire, which actually had a great influence on Greek mythologies and religions. We can see this in deities like Dionysus or Orpheus, who were of Thracian origin, and that he had a great influence on the so-called cult of mysteries that was created around him, and that it was practiced for a long time in Greece, and even after the arrival of Christianity. Apollo and Artemis is another example of Thracian deities assimilated by the Greeks. The renowned historian Strabon has already spoken of this, where he also comments on the incredible similarity between Phrygian, Thracian, Dacian, Greek and Roman rites, as well as Etruscans and Celts, which, although each with their own peculiarities, shared great similarities and mythologies. This was followed by another dark age of around 300 years, of which there are almost no historical records, and that lasted in some areas up to four centuries. From the spring of 1315 something happened. Much irregular cold and torrential rains decimated crops and livestock throughout Europe. The Black Plague fell, and catastrophes destabilized all countries causing millions of people to starve to death. There were political conflicts and uncontrolled chaos. For all this, during the late Middle Ages, records and great knowledge that were in the power of the people were lost. According to reports that survived the time, some desperate with hunger resorted to cannibalism, during the so-called Great Famine of Europe. They were very dark times of much misery and death. Or at least that's what the official story tells us. Before this time called Renaissance, there was no such thing as a follow-up to history. In other words, people did not know anything about his past. They were illiterate people, and where knowledge was dominated entirely by the church and royalty. It was there, around the 8th century, where the existing record has become very insubstantial and not very solid. It is as if that period of time had been advanced, manipulated and altered. It was two German scientists, specifically, Dr. Robert Illig and his colleague who realized this 300-year gap between the year 700 and the year 1000, when the Holy Roman Emperor Otto II, allied with Pope Sylvester II, an alliance to change dates and seize all the power of Europe, inventing a genealogical tree between them in order to claim the right to world power. In other words, that was a giant step in the current world control exercised by the Vatican. with which we have first a lag of 500 years, and then another of 300, in modern historical chronology. Apart from the previous gaps that we are unaware of due to all the occult scribes and many other secret societies, who for a long time have been conspiring to make the truths of this world and its ancient history inaccessible to us. The so-called Tartary as well as many other very advanced and older civilizations such as Atlantis or Lemuria. All ancestral symbology is linked to power and hidden magical knowledge, elemental alchemy and rituals of communion with extra-dimensional beings. All that was real and the ancient history very different from what we have been told. before 1600 there is still evidence of very advanced technology for its time. Impressive urbanization like this image of Strasbourg in the old Alsace. Or structures that are no longer replicable now due to technical issues such as the weight of modern materials, or the quality of the concrete used in ancient times, which is more superior. knowledge that has been lost, and arts that have irreproducible qualities. Sculptures with such detail and perfection, that they continue to baffle us to this day. 
weapons and artifacts that carried great power, and that even the Nazis eagerly sought. Likewise Napoleon, and the story of the chip extracted from his body. No one knows exactly how Hitler and Napoleon got so much power in their quest for hidden ancient knowledge, or who subsidized them with so many millions and armies, so that they could nearly conquer Europe. Certainly there is much that they hide from us from these conquering figures like that of Alexander the Great. Many ancient secrets that we will reveal on this channel. The last of these world catastrophes, or mud flood, occurred around the year we know as 1600. This is why all ancient structures were found buried. Many more are still to be unearthed. Gigantic structures were buried all over the world. Cities like Moscow and Paris. Where we can see many old houses that currently have small windows at ground level. And even unevenness where the sinking of the walls beyond the ground level is appreciated. Many of them were reformed so that this could not be seen. But when doing an analysis, we realize that everything match. In places like Bulgaria and Romania, where these Thracian peoples habited, all that before the last mud flood was buried most of the trace of the so-called Tartary. The chronology of human empires has a gap where it is not possible to place a kingdom that appears on maps in the 15th century made by well-known cartographers such as Willem Blow and Anthony Jenkins. An empire that extended to the Chinese wall and that already it does not appear or is taught to us in history books or universities. According to historical records, that kingdom was the largest and most populous country having its flag and its dynasties, and appearing in various records of that time as the Great Tartary. So what happened to this great empire, and why there's no records of its disappear? This kingdom, and I say kingdom, since genealogical records of the Tartar royalty have been found, was a great empire of which history has erased or traces for reasons unknown to us. For example, the so-called Chinese Wall is actually made by the Tartarian people. Since the maps of the time do not show any wall in that area. Said wall was later than what they tell us. Tartary was very large, encompassing all of Eastern Europe, and much of Asia, even approaching Central Europe. Having even come to control parts of what is now America, as this map of the time shows us. We certainly ignore because they never told us about this great civilization. Is it true what is theorized, that this empire had serious knowledge about free technologies, Have they taken advantage of a world cataclysm to take control of the world and eliminate any evidence about ancient technologies? The evidence shown suggests that it is. And even more true is that they hide our true past from us. There is much to tell about these issues which we will address in future videos. However, it is imperative to understand that they will never tell us the truth about what is truly important. About our ancient past and the magic that exists in this world. They disappear the information that gives us freedom. They hide it and make us simple slaves of this world. And slaves are not educated, but only in what they need to know and no more. They have us playing with papers and fighting with each other. As they always have. 
Very few people are those who have told the truth and made changes despite all the lies that surround every aspect of our life. Let's understand that right now a new story is being created. Let us understand that they always seek to write in their own way. We must not allow our children to grow up hearing the same lies. It is time. Get the children out of the schools. Let us educate them for the future, or they will do the same to us over and over again. They will once again manipulate the present at their convenience, and cover up what really matters to keep us enslaved. We must prevent it. Talk about this daily. Of the wonders that they hide from us, and of the terrible things that they have done that they do not want us to know or speak of. A great change is coming and we must be prepared. They already have secret tunnels and gigantic bunkers in case of any catastrophe. They are already prepared with new and empty cities to implement their new order. This is already coming people, it has already happened, and it is necessary to be prepared. Collect food and unite around the light and the truth. There is little time left. There are no more important topics and this information is vital to preserve freedom in a future that we hope will never come true. We speak the truth, and we will be heard. You just have to wake up from the great deception. The system does not work. Time to go out. Reactive Factory Project